Former Democratic presidential candidate Tulsi Gabbard made the case on Fox News this week that the Democratic Party wants to crush anyone that they see as a possible threat, including third party candidates. Let's listen. I think they definitely do see it as a real threat, which is why you're seeing all of these headlines pop up. They're showing exactly how concerned they are. The sad part is anybody who knows Cornell or Bobby Kennedy Jr. knows they're good people and they're doing what they're doing because they care. I don't agree with everything that they stand for, but but they're motivated by a desire to serve. serve but you American would think people. that they're just the worst people ever, by the way. You hear the whisper. Exactly. Forget the whisper campaigns. They're, you know, it's all just an ego exercise. Well, maybe it is a little bit for the no labels people, but certainly not for RFK yeah. Jr. That man is vilified morning, noon and night. And I don't agree yeah. with him on a, a lot of issues, but I do on some of his stuff that he's worried about the medical cartels and all that yeah. and, and perhaps on the war issue. Yeah. But I mean, they're uh, vilifying him in the same way that they vilified me back in 2020 when I ran for president, in the same way that they vilify anyone that they deem a threat. I have no doubt that they'll get started on Cornell West here uh, shortly. They don't the, like his, you know, ascots or something. Yeah, maybe, I, you know, they'll, they'll, that's the problem is they'll find whatever they need to. They'll make up whatever they need to to smear and destroy people because they don't have a conscience. They don't care who gets hurt they don't have in the a process. Record. Gabbard tweeted, the Democratic elites don't care about U.S., about uh, us, our values, or our freedoms. They care about power and will try to crush anyone who stands in their way. They're doing it to RFK Jr. and will start on Cornell West soon. We must use this next election to choose leaders who truly care about the well-being and interests of the American people and are committed to upholding the Constitution. Now let's hear again how Democratic strategist James Carville feels about Cornell West. He's obviously a, a, a accomplished scholar, academic. Uh, he seems to be a, a, a very charming man. And he's also a minister to the threat of the continued constitutional order in the United States. And if I, I say that because look what Ralph Nader was directly responsible for the election of George W. Bush, which brought about this her horrific Iraq war and this horrific uh, economic downturn we had, among other things. Uh, Jill Stein, who's his campaign manager, is almost certainly an agent of the Russian government. If you don't believe me, somebody at home, Google photo, General Flynn, Vladimir Putin, Jill Stein. She was hosted by the Russians prior to her running in 2016. God, that's that clip just gets dumber every time we listen to it. I'm sorry. So first, he, he, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I was just going to say, listen, we're, we're fighting each other to get into how much we hate this stuff. <laughs> Listening to that again, he says that Cornel West, existential threat to the constitutional order, and then references um, a third party candidate who he holds responsible for the election of George W. Bush, who started the Iraq war, which is an unforgivable sin. But Joe Biden voted for the Iraq war. So right now you're saying that that Cornel West is a is a threat to the order because he could he could we don't even agree that this is correct but let's say he's going to affect the reelection of Joe Biden Joe Biden voted for the thing you just held out as the thing we're trying to avoid right. he supported it right <laughs> so there's there's so much here one his evidence for Jill Stein being a, a Putin puppet the fact that she was pictured at a banquet there's a picture of her at a banquet with a number of other people is ridiculous on its face, as are his claims that it was uh, but for Ralph Nader, uh, Al Gore would have won. He couldn't win his own state. More registered uh, Democrats in Florida voted for George Bush than Green Party candidates. Uh, you have, obviously, the Supreme Court affecting the outcome of that election. Any number of, of causes uh, that had nothing to do with Ralph Nader. But principally, even if it were true, why is it that Al Gore couldn't win those votes? Ultimately, your job as a candidate is to convince voters why they should vote for you, not fear monger and try yes. to frighten them out of voting for what they want to, someone who actually accords with their values. The argument that Carville is making is that to protect democracy, we have to deny people the democratic choice to pick the president of their choosing. That is absurd. Democracy, but not like that. Exactly. Exactly. Now, back to Tulsi Gabbard's uh, point, she of course is right that there is uh, that the Democrats uh, are presented with a kind of existential threat with respect to third uh, third parties because the corporate duopoly maintaining the two party hold over the yes. system requires that uh, ranked choice voting not be implemented. And for people who just don't know. 
you know, the idea is that if you have a ranked choice voting system, you can say, okay, I want to vote for the liber Libertarian candidate or the Green Party candidate or whomever, but in the case that they don't meet the threshold to actually win, my vote then registers for the next uh, the, the next person that I rank on my on my ballot. So, okay, Jill Stein didn't win, so hypothetically I could have written in Hillary Clinton and then my vote would have gone to Hillary Clinton. Now, there's some problems with that. One, there's this expectation that all these Jill Stein voters actually would have written in Hillary Clinton, which does not bear out when you actually do surveys of who third-party third voters actually are. And moreover, it's not just Democrats, but Republicans and Democrats alike have gone scorched earth whenever there is a ballot initiative to try to implement ranked choice voting through a democratic process, because both parties really recognize how hard it will be for them to justify for their sure. poor record and low confidence level with the American public if, if, if people believe that they have options they without throwing it to the other side. Designed and then reinforced a system to make it as much as possible a binary choice between Democrats and Republicans. Both parties have supported making that the reality. So it is so ridiculous for them to be upset that there's a sliver of a choice that they can't literally make it illegal to vote for someone who doesn't have an R or a D. The, the most they can do at this point they can demonize and smear and try to embarrass or humiliate people who are open-minded enough yeah. to say, I don't, I'm not happy with either party. Um, even though it's, you know, it's not gonna make a difference until we have, we want fundamental reform of the system so that you can actually give third party candidates a, a chance or ha you know, have a system more like a, a European system in terms of elections where there are coalitions between different parties. There are actual, there's actually a range of ideological views of the parties and they're right. constant and, and there's more competition for your support and your votes as the people. It, it, it seems to, it works better than this winner take all system that ends up being a binary choice right. between two utterly um, uh, unacceptable, um, indistinguishable on many issues, parties that end up also picking um, really um, abhorrent candidates, yes. at least in very recent cycles. I yes. mean, candidates that large majorities of, or large numbers of people yeah. have negative um, views of. That wasn't always the case, but uh, recently that it has increasingly become the case that the people the other side can't stand the most ends up being the candidate. Yeah. I mean, Jordan Cheriton over at Status Quo, we've had on the show a number of times, did a great breakdown uh, of this uh, issue over on his channel. And he went through all of the various so-called spoiler candidates and debunked the narratives around them. And it was so interesting to hear him talk about Ross Perot, who was the most successful third-party candidate in recent history with what, like, something in the high teens percent of the vote, mm -hmm. 16, 17, 18, 19 percent of the vote. And there is this expectation that Bill Clinton was really, uh, you know, that, 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 that if R Ross Perot weren't running, that those votes would have gone to the Republican. Right. But when you look at the numbers, and again, when you actually surveyed uh, Perot voters, it turns out that what they were voting, what was really motivating them was being anti-NAFTA. And uh, that's also what but, um, sorry, uh, Clinton was ostensibly running on it at the time. So what you saw was that people w were, went from one anti-NAFTA candidate to another anti-NAFTA candidate, and that it wasn't actually yeah. going to affect the outcome of the— Although was Clinton perceived as being an anti-NAFTA candidate? At the time. When people run one way. It was like an Obama situation, yeah. as I understand it. And that polls show that only one state maybe would have flipped its result, and it wouldn't have changed the outcome of the election. I think it, it was Ohio. Now, it's really, really worth noting— that both Republicans and Democrats know exactly how serious the threat third-party candidates uh, put to the duopoly, and they have been working overtime to make sure preemptively that there are no um, efforts to uh, uh, shift to a ranked choice voting system on a, on a, a local level. Uh, this is from an article on the 19th from earlier this year um, about how so now some Republicans are trying to ban its use in other forms instead of instant runoff voting, often preemptively. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem and Idaho Governor Brad Little both signed bans on ranked choice voting in March. Republicans have filed similar ban proposals this year in Arizona. Montana, North Dakota, and Texas, mm. for those of you in those states um, to pay attention to. Um, the number of proposals to ban the practice is nearly double the legislative activity from last year when Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and Tennessee Governor Bill Lee signed bills into law that prohibited their use, making their states the first to do so. This article goes on and it goes through a number of Republicans and Democrats alike who have really focused quietly under the radar and preventing actual democracy from coming to states all across America. So he's right when he says there's a threat, but the threat isn't to spoiling uh, or about spoiling. The threat is that without being able to argue that you will spoil it for the other side, 
these parties will have a really hard time getting anyone to come out and vote for them or support them in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. We need fundamental reform of the system. Uh, more rising right after this. Stay with us.